My name's Charlie Taylor and I'm the government's expert advisor on behaviour. And I'm delighted to be here in Wood End Park Community School to try out my idea of a checklist. Um, I got the idea of this um, as a way of improving behaviour in schools from a book called The Checklist Manifesto, in which um, the author Atul Gunde discovered that if we get the simple things right, even when we're doing a complex operation or flying an aeroplane or indeed teaching a class, actually we make fewer mistakes. And so here in Wood End Park, I've come with a menu of ideas for improving behaviour and the teachers have taken the ones that they think are the most important for them and they put them together in their own checklist, which they then run through every morning and every afternoon to make sure they do the basic, simple things right. Because we know that consistency and the day-to-day -day following of a behaviour policy is one of the best ways to improve and manage behaviour. Avril, I've, we've just been in your class here at Wilhelm Park, um, looking at the way you're using the checklist. Um, could you just tell us a bit about how you develop the checklist in, in, in your school? We've got a very good behaviour policy um, and the expectations are very clear. But I think there's, there's obviously room for interpretation as you go between year groups and between um, members of staff. So we're looking to make that consistent so that everybody was doing the same thing and so that the children knew were always aware exactly what those expectations were. Um, the behaviour policy that we use really closely links the children's behaviour and rewards as well as sanctions. So at the moment the children they earn a, a stamp in their diary at the end of every day if they've behaved as expected during the course of that day. But what we noticed was that we were getting some slippage so we'd start off with two or three children forgetting to bring their diaries and then by the end of a term you might have you know over half of a class that had forgotten to bring in their diaries. So they just weren't earning those stamps. So actually the incentive or the motivation of that reward was losing its power. So one of the things that we included on our checklist was the element of making sure at the beginning of the day the teacher that's there knows to check, have the children got their diaries, um, and so that they can re-kind of plug that idea of get your diary, you behave beautifully, you get your stamp, and at the end of the half term you get your prize. The other thing, I mean it sounds obvious, and, and we start off the year doing it really well, but again, once you get past that half term point building up towards the end of term, you start to get tired. Um, was to make sure that we included that element of positive praise. And I think having that on the checklist um, has been really powerful because even halfway through a lesson or even after you've done your opening to the lesson, you stop and you think, have I actually said anything positive to anybody? And it's amazing to notice the impact. It's really simple things, even if it's a comment on fantastic, have a team point, you're sitting up really beautifully, yeah. and then you see that knock-on impact and suddenly everybody else straightens themselves up. Or, you know, a team point for fantastic handwriting, team point for remembering to take turns, put your hand up. Um, that's been really powerful. If your teacher wants to get you quiet, what, what does she do in order to get you quiet? What does, what's her... uh, she sometimes says like um, five, four, three, two, one, and sometimes she claps in a rhythm. Queen point for Jamela, team point for Abby, team point for Leandro, team point for Renin. Well done. We can see that uh, even within the first week of using it, the teachers at PPA were talking about you know, that the children were responding to it really well. So I think it, what it's done is that it's been that, you've got it in your, in, it's on your desk, so it's there, it's visible, you can see it, so you're not, it's not something that you have to remember yeah. because it's there in front of you. So it's a really useful aid memoir, you can quickly run through, you can stop and think, have I been positive? No, I haven't, perhaps I should be. Um, that has a, a positive effect in terms yeah. of how the children are behaving. Um, but it's making sure that all of those systems and strategies that we've put into place to, to motivate the children to behave well, rather than just telling them off, you know, they've got those rewards for, for yeah. positive behaviours, that actually those are happening rather than letting those slide. So in terms of reducing the slippage, definitely that's been fantastic. It's easy to use from a teacher's point of view. And the children have responded really well, behaviour's superb. How could other teachers use it in, in other schools, do you think? I think it's really useful because it's almost a, a mental reminder that when you're really busy and things start to slip or, you know, you've got so many distractions, so many things going on, you're trying to focus on your lesson, you're trying to focus on, you know, it just pulls everything back together and it's very quick and it's not a great big long waffly wordy list, it's very, it uses what you're doing already so you can tailor it to what you're doing in your school um, and make it consistent through your school and it makes sure that every adult in the school knows exactly what those expectations are, every child knows what those expectations are. Visitors to the school know what those expectations are and they can use the same rewards, the same sanctions as everybody else. So that element of consistency right from day one I think is really powerful for the children but also it's incredibly powerful for the teachers because you've got that step system that you can go through.